I decided I wanted to be tall today, and my legs hurt, hate me for it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, I'm Tyler, and I'm a senior at Bellevue East. What can I say, Steph? You're welcome. And this is a poem from a fibromyalgia flare-up. I don't know what competition this is, but I do know that I'm winning. Listen, that's not something I'm positive is a good thing, but... When I'm up at three in the morning crying into the toilet, I feel the same thing I felt when I won my first place at horseback riding. Confusion and just a little fear. You see, chronic illness at times does feel like a competition in the way that no one really cares until you win, but winning in this case is finally passing out after holding back vomit for hours or managing to find someone who is actually willing to talk about it because sometimes I just want to talk about it. My dad once said, I don't know what to say, so I'm going to say nothing. But it's easy to comfort a chronically ill person, I promise. I can't tell you what I wouldn't do to have someone sit with me at 3 in the morning just telling me I'm going to be OK. Because there's only so many times I can count the cracks on the ceiling, scuff marks on the side of the tub, strands of fur on my cat, how many seconds of my life I've spent in pain, how many ways to tell someone you've been hunched over the toilet crying since you were 8 years old. The real trick is how to tell that to your doctor. You go for one problem, and he asks if you have any other issues. Let me pull up the list. He always seems surprised, like, honey, you're 17, and I don't know how to tell him I bond with my grandmother by showing up how many pills we'd have to take a night and how many we can take at once. I took five pills at once a couple nights ago, and that is the most powerful I have ever felt. I get pretty much the same couple comments every time I mention my illness, and most of the time it revolves around me trying yoga. But my favorite comment is, sweetie, if your head hurts so bad, why are you on your phone? Oh, you see, Karen, I've had a frog theme bathroom for as long as I have been ill, and I've had time to name every single frog on the curtains, rug, painting. I even have a little toothbrush holder that's a frog holding a lily, and you put your toothbrushes through the petals. In case you were wondering, his name is Royce. He's my one true ally at this point, and a very good metaphor for chronic illness because I use a mug to hold my toothbrushes. His lily broke off a long time ago, and of course I tried to fix my little man, but there's only so much I can do with tape and hope. He still sits hidden under my sink with his poorly taped on Lily, and I think about him every time I find myself on the bathroom floor, only able to move to lean forward so I don't vomit on myself. Royce is a real one. He knows what it's like to be hidden out of view, but everyone still knows you're there and that you're hurting, but no one knows how to fix you, so they push you farther back and ignore the dust in their old patchwork job. Back to what I said about this being a competition, I think I'm winning, but unlike most other people's trophies, mine don't ever go on the mantle. Mine belongs where no one can see it because my parents never wanted me to even sign up for this sport, and to be honest, neither did I. But hey, my brother had the same attitude with tennis, so I gotta be doing something right. Thank you. <laughs>